Welcome back to the making of Not Tonight. So last time we did Summer's Love Again, I kind of took you through that journey of how I wrote it and how it, loads of different productions and how it eventually came to be what it is. So we're going to do this with Not Tonight this time. Someone to Love Again I wrote in 2016 summer, but Not Tonight was earlier than that. So let me just have a look. March the 25th, 2016 was when I wrote Not Tonight with another guy who will remain nameless because I just don't like using names in these kind of videos just because if we did, if a certain producer had a version of it that I didn't use, I don't want them to feel like I'm trying to make them look bad because I'm really not. I'm just showing you like the journey of it and everyone's played their part in some way. I would basically just recently become single and I had broken up with my girlfriend like maybe a few months before and I'd say if Someone's Love Again was like the acceptance stage of breaking up with someone, you're kind of over it and ready to move on, Not Tonight I'd say is, is earlier than that. So I was definitely still kind of hurting from, from the breakup and yeah, still kind of finding things difficult. So the idea was, well it was actually based on the true story, I was basically, I'd basically just done this gig um, in Soho at Freedom Bar and there was this girl who was saying, oh you know, do you want to you know, go out to a bar or something, she, she wanted to kind of go somewhere else and and I just said not tonight because I just didn't want to, what's it called, I don't know, I just di didn't want to go with, go out with someone else or kind of have anything with someone else when I was still kind of thinking about my ex, even though we were broken up, I still felt like it was, that like I wasn't in the right headspace to do it. I think it was a few weeks after that actually happened that I went to the producer and kind of told him this story and he was like oh yeah not tonight that's that should be the, the title of the song which i never thought about before in the song we literally just told the story of kind of that night and literally playing so like standing on your own you feel like we're alone it's about me being at a gig and performing and she was in the audience to this this other girl who was not my ex-girlfriend was just someone i'd just met the song was literally just about that experience we wrote it and it ended up being some being a song that people seem to really like, and like my family really liked, it, my friends really liked it, and I thought that yeah, I needed to do something with it. But I'll show you the initial demo for Not Tonight, and it sounds unlike, completely unlike the version that um, I've just released, and I'll show you what it sounds like. It's insane. <laughs> How much has changed? So it starts off with a kind of spacey atmosphere kind of thing. Standing on your own, you feel like we're alone. You think I'm speaking to you. It's kind of a bit more R and B, like in a way, a bit more modern. I sing in your words, written about her. I see them making you so, move. I'm just gonna skip to the actual like drop of the knot tonight because that's really um really telling that it's just like so different. To see, and you're all over me. You said we can do anything I want. When you're alone with me, if I take you home with me. I said not tonight, sorry, but I cannot give you what you want. Not tonight, cause I'm caught up on someone. So it's like totally unlike the version I've released. Because at the time I literally had no idea what I was doing. I was like, hey, I just heard this trap song in the club that I thought was cool. Let's try and get those hi-hats in there. But then like there was some kind of Coldplay-esque guitar line over the top of the chorus. And the whole thing was just like a total mix of styles, which can be really good. But I always thought that... Well, actually, I always really liked that demo because there was something really good about it. But everyone kept saying to me, you know, I don't know what this is. I don't know who you are. If you have all these different styles coming together, like, who are you? Like, wh where do you fit in all of that? It's just a bit of a mess. So, and everyone kept saying that to me. So I thought, okay, this is obviously not the version that I should kind of use. Even though it's good, it's not... 
you know, not the right thing for me because none of my other songs sounded like this kind of weird R&B thing. So I thought I need to fix it. And fixing this was probably the hardest song, definitely the hardest song I've ever fixed. Just because the chorus, like, is quite weird in the sense for me that, like, the melody kind of doesn't go up like most of my choruses. Like, it goes, when you're alone with me, I said not tonight, and just kind of, it's not really a climactic thing in itself. It just kind of stays lower, the, the notes go lower, which is probably part of what makes it good, but also makes it, made it hard to produce because it's not like a classically written song in the way that some of my others are. Like, What A Time To Be Live is more like, you know, the chorus is really loud and the verses are uh, less loud. So it's more of a kind of progression, whereas Not Tonight is, is not really so much like that. I basically hung on to that song and didn't know what I was going to do with it, didn't know what production style I was going to use, so I just kept on kind of writing other songs and producing other stuff and, and trying to figure out what my sound was going to be while I had this song that I really liked, Not Tonight, and didn't know what to do with it, but I thought, we'll sort it out eventually. But then I, as I mentioned in the last video, I kind of got discovered by this manager from a YouTube video and started working with him, and he was like, oh, someone to love again, let's get that production right, but also not tonight, this song is is really, really good, and we need to get this right. So he said, you know, of all the producers in the world, who, who would you want to work with? I gave him some names, and one of the names on the list, he was like, I've got you in with him, so he, and you're going to do Not Tonight with him, and, you know, it's going to be great. And so in my head, I was like, this is perfect, he's going to nail it, it's going to be the best production ever because this guy's one of my favorite producers and I went in with him and he kind of just said you know played, um, he heard the song he was like okay yeah what do you want to do with it and uh, I just didn't really know so I said mm, maybe like some kind of like kind of a disco influence thing just because it kind of had that it has that disco tempo and it felt like the right thing to do and also I was trying to go soul in a way, so they kind of had that crossover. Basically I was just pretty unsure, but that felt like the right thing to do. He kind of made this track, which I will play, which is also super, before I play it, super unlike um, what I've released. So <laughs> this should be fun. Standing on your own, you feel like we're alone, you think I'm speaking to you. So it's like starts with a piano. I'm singing you words written about her. I see them making you move. Oh, I can, but I won't. Yeah, so it's, it's still kind of unclear what it's gonna do. You'd like it to go. So it's not really. I try, but there's something inside of me. It's okay so far, I think. But then it goes a little bit weird. You could have it. You get the strings coming in. My God, you're a sight to see, and you're all over me. You said we can do anything I want. When you're alone with me, if I take you home with me, I said not to name you. So I can give you what you want. Have that kind of disco groove and these strings, but I was just like. No, that's not right. But it's it's so hard to explain, isn't it? Because yeah, just it just just didn't sound right. So I, I said to him, "Hey man, you know I'm not sure about this." Um, and he was like, "Oh, you know, then then maybe if you, if you're not sure, then I can't really help you because you're not sure. So you need to be sure." So I was like, "Okay, I need to become more sure." <laughs> so then I started working with some other producers, parked that song. Started working with some other producers and thought, okay, let, let's let's write some new songs, try and figure out a style so I can take this song, not tonight, to, to him or someone else or whoever, and just and just make it in the style that I want to go forward with. And so I started working with, with a few people and kind of ended up on this Motown thing, kind of modern production meets Motown, and, and it was kind of starting to work for me. Like I was quite enjoying it and. We made a few songs, 
with a few different people and, and it was working. With one of the guys that I wrote one of these new songs with, I said, hey, there's this Not Tonight song knocking about, do you want to have a crack at it? And he said, yeah, let's just do the same thing that you did. So I'm going to play that. And that was in, where was this? That was like mid-2018. Okay, so this, this was getting closer, I thought. So it kind of starts off with with the band like coming in and seem to kind of work. I thought. So yeah, you kind of get the idea, and then it comes back in the chorus with the horns and stuff. So it does work for what it is and it and everybody liked it to a point i don't think everyone thought that it was necessarily the version we were going to use but people did like it but there was just something about it that i wasn't sure about because it was that it had the motown thing and it had like the the band elements of it that i was trying to get more into my music but it i don't know i think it kind of lost a bit of the magic from the original which was the a bit of a melancholy feeling because the story is quite sad about turning someone down because you're still thinking about someone else so you're kind of hopeless whereas coming in with a big brass band and you know a lot of energy and attitude straight at the beginning is maybe was just not the right fit <laughs> it's really confusing but yeah it just wasn't quite right so I thought Let's park it. Let's just leave the, the version and, and just come back to it when it's right. 2019 came around. We released What A Time To Be Alive, which was also really difficult to to find. Which it, it warrants its own video, really, What A Time To Be Alive. Um, so I might do that. But, yeah, so we came up with that, and that was this kind of modern, Motown-y, bandy thing that was maybe had was more sparse like in terms of the instruments and in the verses and stuff there's not a lot going on so it has that modern feeling to it it kind of worked and it seemed to be the right sound and i started to go through my other songs and kind of apply that sound to it so i did i was it what it has to be live and i did good thing going someone to love again i think it was not tonight number four the fourth song so after i did someone to love again which was so difficult to find I said to the, this producer that I work with, I said, you know, we just nailed this Someone to Love Again song. Do you want to have a go at uh, Not Tonight? And I told him this whole story and he said, I'm a little bit anxious about getting into this song with you because of this story and, and how difficult it was for you. But I, I'm pretty sure we can nail it. Let's just go for it. So I'm trying to think about how I arrived at it. I knew that the last version you just heard was the closest one but I just thought it was too brash I knew I wanted to start smaller like something more intimate like because you're standing on your own you feel like we're alone it feels like it should be an intimate thing but then it shouldn't it can't be boring either so I think I've been playing with my band like live and I said to them oh hey you know do you want to just jam around with this not tonight song and the bass player came up with this um, bass line, which was like, doom, doom, ba -do -doom, doo -doom, doom, ba -do -doom. and I just heard that and I thought that's really good, and just kind of recorded it on my phone. I don't know if I have the phone. Do I have the phone? Um, the voice recording that would be pretty cool. Not tonight, groove. So that was what the bass player played. And I was like, okay, that's what the song should start with in the version that I just released. That's how it starts. And then the drums just follow that. And then basically just center everything around that, but try and keep it as sparse as possible without any kind of too much attitude in the brass. So like, instead of the brass going, like it has to be more sparse in terms of like in the version that I just released it's like 
it's just little bits like here and there which is less which kind of took away the attitude for me and kind of made it maybe a bit sadder which I thought was what was missing. And let me just go up to the chorus. It's still got a f like a movement about it and it still has that Motown kind of feeling but it's not as, yeah, like I said, it doesn't have as much attitude as the other version and it's kind of more real and a bit grittier and just, yeah, it just has a bit more um, depth to it in a way. I was just so happy with it and I thought, yep, yeah, cracked it. You know, and I'm pretty happy to see the back of it because that song gave me a, quite a few sleepless nights because I just, I always loved this song and like the story and just the whole history of it but just getting it right has been a nightmare. And it also really changed the way that I write songs because when I wrote Not Tonight I wasn't really thinking about verse, pre-chorus, chorus I was just thinking about, oh, what should come next? And I wasn't very methodical in like the way I d did it. And also I wasn't thinking about production, I wasn't thinking about genre. I was literally just writing whatever. But I just realised that I, I can't do that <laughs> anymore. I need to have a bit more structure in my head about how... It, I want to know how it's going to sound when I'm writing it. I want to have the finish line in sight because I don't want to write a song and then take four years to release it again because that is, it's just awful, it just weighs on you and it, you know, so basically now when I, now when I write songs like I've got an idea of oh it's this kind of thing, the chorus is going to do something like this, so I mean maybe that's not a good way of approaching it, maybe it is, I mean what do you think, do you think that songs should be more organic or do you think they should be methodical. I'd be interested to hear because I don't really know how other people write songs but to me the only way to write songs is to do it in a really structured way. But yeah that's the journey of Not Tonight and before I sign off I just want to say thank you to everyone who has worked on this song and been on this journey with me even like friends and stuff who said what you know give their opinions on it and everyone's had so many opinions on it because everyone's just been trying to get it right. Let me know what you think about the song, let me know what you think about the process, do you think I messed up along the way, should I have done things differently, and subscribe, of course. I'll see you next time.